13 is significant for many different reasons. 13 letters, the Pauline epistles. I would argue that Paul wrote 14 epistles with Hebrews, but that's neither here nor there. Then we have the 12 who were originally called plus Jesus. That makes 13 as well. But I guess the number 13 rings home with me, uh, especially because it represents the number of funerals that I had to go to. All of this transpired, all of these deaths transpired or occurred between the ages of, well, I was a teenager, so all except for one uh, occurred in my teenage years where I saw 12 of my family members and friends laid to rest, except one. One occurred when I was around 22 or so. Needless to say, I had to become acquainted with death at a very early age. I had to see funerals. I had to see loved ones being buried. I had to go to grave sites and see where they lowered the casket down into the ground. I had to... I had to witness mothers crying family members turn up while I weeped myself. I'm not going to act as if I've always been like this with God. Matter of fact, in my early years, y'all who know my testimony, I didn't come to the faith until I was well into my teenage years. But it was in those teen years that I became very acquainted with death. And although I didn't have a grasp on who God was to me, and what he had done in my life and how significant of an impact he was going to have on my life. I didn't have any idea at that time, but I was left with several questions. Questions like, God, how could you? How could you let this happen? Like, why did you have to take him? Why did my uncle have to die? Why did my cousin have to die? Stuff like that, like, God, why, why? And my, my thoughts were <laughs> consumed with the question, why? You would think after 13 deaths that my heart would grow numb to death, that I would just normalize it and just get used to people passing away. But that never happened, and I thank God for that. Fast forward to 2022. We have the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We have one side that is elated and overjoyed with the overturning, while the other side is upset, marching in the streets over their rights to choose. I thank God that my heart never turned callous and never got used to or normalizing death. In fact, it did the opposite. It caused me to appreciate life all the more. It taught me that every day is a gift. And this thing called life that God gave us is precious and we should never take it for granted. I don't know where you land. All I know is when I read my Bible, I flip over to Jeremiah and it says that God knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. So that means that somebody's lying. And I'm pretty confident that it's not God. The scriptures also teach us that we should not kill. Unfortunately, we've come up with different names for this thing called murder. Names like the right to choose or a woman's choice. They manufacture and invent different ways every other day. All I know is this. Regardless of what you call it, a life that would have been living otherwise was terminated. So my questions turn away from God and they turn towards you on the other side of this lens. Since when do we have the right to play God in determining and deciding when someone is fit to live and when they're not? When the circumstances around in their conception is convenient or if it's the right time? Acquainted with death. Something to think about. Never talk about they real life. Ne ne never talk about the fact that they don't really get it. Boy, that man's a real lie. Bank account, look at triple, man. I'm talking zeros, man. I'm not a hero, but I know we all living on that.